Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG channel. My name is Reed and I'm here with today's ECG. Go ahead down to the description and download the PDF for this so that you can follow along and make your own notes. And while you're there, like and subscribe to the video to help support the channel if you enjoy the content. So let's get started on this one. So first thing I like to do is look at the forest and the trees of the forest are my QRSs. And so maybe I'll come down here to this V5 rhythm strip. And what do I notice? I've got this wide complex QRS that is occurring regularly consistently. I don't see any drops as I scan through the whole thing. I've got some P waves before my QRS is, so that's reassuring. And so, and the reason why I say these are P waves, if you look really closely, usually the T waves are really smooth and the P waves are sharp deflections. And so those are the difference between a T and a P sometimes if you're having trouble. And um, let's look at the rate here. We'll find a QRS that lands on a solid line. Maybe this one's pretty close. 300, 150, 100. A little bit faster than 100 beats per minute. So maybe 110 beats per minute. Eyeball on it. So it's a tachycardia. So we've got a tachycardia. We've got a wide complex tachycardia. And so we need to kind of start narrowing our differential down. What could be going on? We, we have to think it could be VTAC. Could this be... Uh, SVT with a variancy. What's going on? So let's just work through it. We said we may have saw some atrial activity, but what do we notice? We'll kind of go to the next step, atrial activity here. And I notice that I do have these P waves that are occurring before every QRS. Those P waves are upright in lead one that we just looked at. And if I go to AVF, these P waves are upright in AVF. And so we do have sinus P waves and so that helps me kind of think maybe this is a sinus tachycardia. Next thing in my conduction system is to take a look at my intervals. And I like to go my PR interval first for that AV node function. And so, because um, that's the next in our conduction system. And so if I get a QRS that starts maybe right here on this solid line, my P wave, and that is less than 200 milliseconds. So we have a normal PR interval, so our PR interval is normal, so that's good. QRS, we said is wide, let's measure that. We've got a QRS that's wide, it looks like maybe three and a half small boxes, so that would be, what would that, 140 millisecond QRS duration, so that is a wide QRS. Let's look at our QRS axis, it's upright in lead one. It's upright in AVF, so that means it's going down and to the left, so it's a normal QRS axis. So why is this QRS wide? Well, we know that things like conduction delays can cause wide QRSs, things that don't take the normal Hesperkinji system. And we, we said that these are having sinus P waves with normal PR interval, and it's happening one-to-one, -one, so every P creates a QRS. It's reassuring. And so if conduction is coming from our AV node down into the ventricles, and it's occurring in an aberrant or a wide fashion, the largest likelihood is that this is some type of bundle branch block. But what type? Is it a left or a right bundle branch block? So what I notice is in the lateral leads, which are measuring the left side, we've got this positive slurring in lead one. I've got an AVL, which is another lateral lead. I've got this R, R prime. So I notice I've got an R, and then I also have an R prime. And that R prime represents late lateral forces going towards the left lateral aspect of the heart because, potentially, of a left bundle branch block. And left bundle branch blocks are going to present same, kind of this R, R prime. You kind of see the slurring there. That's really what that represents, those late forces heading towards lateral V5, V6, kind of this slurring. And what you'll also notice is that we will lose our septal R wave. Look, there's no septal R. And that's because the left bundle branch block, when it blocks the left bundle, the left bundle, the left bundle is actually what supplies septal depolarization, which is represented by the little R wave in V1 and V2. And if you don't understand that anatomy, which is important, go check out my left bundle branch block video. I think that'll really help you out. So we've got a left bundle branch block. That's good. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look for a QT interval. And what I like to do is I like to take, go to kind of these two QRSs, and right in the middle, 
should be when my T wave terminates. And so we see that here. My T wave is done by then. So we do not have a prolonged QT interval in this. And I'm going to scan through, look for any pathological Q waves. I don't. I'm going to look for any ST or T wave changes. I don't see any outside of the normal strain pattern that you get with um, left bundle branch blocks, right, where you get these T wave inversions here. That's normal in a left bundle branch block. We know that there's a different criteria to evaluate ST elevation, Scarbosa, or the modified Scarbosa criteria. And so a couple things as we put this all together. Let's, let's, we've got a sinus rhythm, specifically a sinus tachycardia with a left bundle branch block. And so that's where we put it all together. And so... What I want you to think about for this is when you see wide and fast, like we do today, I need you to think about, is this coming from the ventricles or like a VTAC, or is this coming from a supraventricular source? And is it conducting aberrantly? Meaning, is there a bundle branch block of some sort or, or, you know, right or left bundle branch blog. And so that's what we saw here was this SVT with a Berenzine. And so have that differential back in your mind. Have a framework to work through it just like we did today. And uh, where you're kind of looking at what is the atria doing and what is the ventricles doing and how do they correlate and does it make sense for a certain type of conduction, which we nailed it today. So don't forget to click that subscribe button and tune back in tomorrow. I'm excited for some more ECGs. Have a great day.